والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم واذن في الناس بالحج ياتوك رجالا وعلى كل ضامر ياتين من كل فج عميق الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين حج and the verses in the Quran that talks about this pillar of Islam there are so many benefits and the journey of Hajj is such a journey that would make the Muslim practice the different acts of worship that we're supposed to practice throughout our whole entire life to fulfill the purpose of our life and that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone we talked about the Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We talked about the Ubudiyya and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with perfect submission and perfect love. And today inshallah ta'ala we'll talk about an act of worship that is very important. That does not leave the Muslim whatsoever at all times. And that is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikrullahi azza wa jal. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verses of Hajj, you would find it clearly. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the verses in Surah Al-Baqarah لَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَن تَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَرِ الْحَرَامِ وَاذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا هَدَاكُمْ وَإِنْ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الضَّالِّينَ ثُمَّ أَفِيدُوا مِنْ حَيْثُ أَفَاضَ النَّاسُ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ فإذا قضيتم مناسككم فاذكروا الله كذكركم آباءكم أو أشد ذكرا الآيات. These verses Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is ordering the believers after they go from Arafat, from the day of Arafah, the pillar of Al Hajj, they will go to Muzdalifah. They spend the night in Muzdalifah, a place between Arafah and Mina. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala ordering the believers after the day of Arafah is finished, which is the day of forgiveness of the sins, where the tears are being shed. And people are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and so on and so forth. After that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering the believers to make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After all these acts of worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering the believers to make dhikr, to make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had guided them after they have been astray and in dalal, in deviation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that guided them. As a way to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would make this remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not to be in state of forgetfulness thinking that the sins have been forgiven in the day of Arafah. So now it's time to forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is definitely not the attitude of a believer, of a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in constant act of worship. And this is the act of worship that doesn't need a certain time or a certain place or a certain rituals to it, it's basically the tongue and the heart constantly in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also in the next two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering the believers, after they finish the manasik, the rituals of hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering the believers to make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same way that they remember their fathers and their parents. How that a person doesn't forget them whatsoever, the same thing but even more, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering the believers to make the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we learn in the journey of Hajj by the order of Allah in the verses of Hajj to constantly make the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A dhikr or the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala since it's an act of worship, we're supposed to do it with the perfect love and the perfect submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes to some of us it's difficult to make dhikr, to constantly be in the state of dhikr. But to be constantly in the state of dhikr, we need to force our tongues to make the remembrance of Allah so that the hearts will be reacting as a result of that and the heart would submit itself to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the tongue sometimes is bored or tired, the heart is constantly in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is that? When a Muslim looks at everything, if a person is awake, anything that we see with our own eyes have been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That by itself should remind us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our own selves, our own movements, our own speech, any state that we are in, it's supposed to remind us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Muslim is never in state of forgetfulness. 
So we get to practice that in the rituals of Hajj in few days that we take with us after the journey of Hajj to be constantly in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in these verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we make the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We do it according to the way of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Not something that we invent from our own desires. It's something that we follow the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in what we say and also in the way that we say and we make the dhikr. We say the things that the Prophet sallam taught us to say. Whether it's the morning and the evening dhikr. Whether it's to say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar, subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al-azim, and so on and so forth. We say all of these praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ordered us in the same manner. We do not get in gatherings in which we do certain ways of dhikr or move in certain ways, thinking that this is something that will be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing would be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless we follow the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in every major and minor thing. And this is something that is clearly stated in the Quran and in the rituals of Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to make the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the moment that a person would make the ihram, he would say, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. And this beautiful dhikr that we hear and we say when a person is in Hajj, when it's the day of an nahr the 10th day of the Hijjah, uh, the Muslim is ordered to replace the talbiya with the takbir, the takbirat of Al Eid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. And throughout the ten days of the Hijjah, the takbir and raising the voice with the takbir, it's something that is from the way of the Prophet. والسلام, in the day of Arafah, the people are invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His bounties, making the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after they finish the day of Arafah, they are in constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the five daily prayers. And in between, since this is the journey that they left everything behind for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so the pilgrimage are not supposed to be thinking about their uh, dwellings, about their trade, about their business, but the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the believers to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they go to Mina, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in the authentic hadith, the meaning of which, that Mina are days of eating and drinking and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People in Mina, they eat from the animals that they slaughtered for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they also, in the three days of a tashriq they do not just sit and relax, but they are in constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said. So for a week or less, with the rituals of Hajj, fulfilling the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believers would practice this great act of worship, and that is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to establish that in our life. One of the reasons why the person would fall into the sins, why would a person be not acting according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us is that we relax and undermine this act of worship which is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to some of us we think that remembrance of Allah is just to say some words once in a while. But for the believers we need to understand that the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a state and not just an act of worship. It's a state that a person has to be in. The state of dhikr, the state of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no matter what state that the person is in, if the tongue cannot say the words of dhikr because, for example, a person is relieving oneself in the bathroom, we're not supposed to make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is by the tongue, but the heart would never stop. The heart of the believers never stop when it comes to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise the believers in the Qur'an, those who would remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, الَّذِينَ يَفْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ those who would remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala standing, sitting, and on their sides. What other position that a person would be in? All of these positions were ordered to make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even when a Muslim is fulfilling one's desire in relations with one's wife, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa also from his sunnah is to say certain words, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to protect oneself from the evenness of the shaytan. All of that so that we don't forget the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of our affairs. We need the season of ibadah, which is like in Hajj, in Ramadan, for the person to be able to understand this act of worship and these acts of worship in full, 
and so that we practice it for a few days and submitting this submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the person would take it with him or with her to have the rest of our lives in state of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam الحج المبرور ليس له جزاء إلا الجنة that the righteous hajj has no rewards other than jannah meaning that when a person goes for hajj and it's a righteous one with no sins the person reward is jannah the previous sins are forgiven the major sins are forgiven so as a result of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for such a journey that a person need to change his own life and one of the ways to change our lives is to change our lives from being from the state of forgetfulness, ghafla, to the state of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the dhikr. And we see that clearly in the verses of the Qur'an, ordering us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we heard in the verses. فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُ مِنْ عَرَفَاتِ فَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ That if you move from Arafat, make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same way He had guided you. So this is why we make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he had guided the person making hajj to stand in the day of Arafah. And also once the, all the rituals of hajj are finished, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ Meaning in the days of Mina, after Arafah and Muzdalifah, and after throwing the pebbles of uh, Jamrat al-Aqaba al-Kubra, and after making the Tawaf and the Sa'i, and so on and so forth, and then the hajj will come back to Mina, and stay in Mina in the three days of At-Tashriq, have no jobs but to throw the pebbles every day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering the believers فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَسِكَكُمْ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَذِكْرِكُمْ آبَأَكُمْ أَوْ أَشَدَّ ذِكْرًا That make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like you would remember your parents, your fathers, your mothers or even more as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and this is why because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and He is the one to be remembered so that's why the people in Hajj sometimes the shaytan would overtake them they would make them busy with arguments with discussing other affairs, especially in the days of Mina, the days of At-Tashriq, people having the whole day to stay in Mina, so they would start speaking about what's in their hearts. But for the believers, their hearts, when it's full of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would make the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this act of worship. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deeds, and to make us among those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍّ عَمِيقٍ